Beach floating in a mace and a little bus chasing Friday night high, got the short skirt shaking Flat bills flip back, bill buckles blinking back Out in the cut, got four wheel drives to Cadillacs Tonight, I, yeah tonight Just sipping on the good times Yeah, got nowhere to be But out here in the country in the moon Just stoking my fire. Today we're gonna to stoke another fire. Fire of knowledge. Now, today we're gonna to talk about CVT transmissions or continuous variable transmissions. So unlike this snow, these are not new. They have been dated back all the way back to sketches from Leonardo da Vinci. They, uh, he, he, he sketched the first, it doesn't look the exact same, but the, the main principles of using centrifugal force to drive two pinion wheels Turn, uh, to turn a belt is, is what was created. Now basically what we did was took his knowledge that he created all the way back in 1490, he took it, threw it out, didn't even use it. Now, CVT transmissions were never really known globally wide and still aren't today. Subaru made a really good attempt back in 1980 and they made, they released the Subaru Justy in, uh, um, in, in Tokyo in 1980. It was a failure. It was an absolute failure. The Subaru Justy was the first car to implement the CVT technology and it was, and, and it went down. It was bad. So that was the first bridge that we had to cross. Now, after that, um, uh, after that, Nissan made the first big attempt and, and that was really, that was the big route of CVT transmissions was the Nissan Altima. The Nissan Altima was it was the first implication of CTV transmissions that that Nissan took the design and tweaked it so that it wasn't it wasn't as because one of the biggest disadvantages was that it can the application for worldwide it couldn't expand a lot of torque. It was a great idea and great ratios, but it, the technology wasn't there. So Nissan changed that. They changed it and they made they made the belt stronger. They made the weights bigger. They they changed the CTV as we know it today to withstand their 3.5 liter engine in the Nissan Altima. And that when that was released in the early 1990s, it was a huge game changer. That changed, well, that changed the industry of CVT transmissions we know today. So after that, it wasn't, it wasn't used. Ford made a, they made a, they may have tried it in their Ford Tauruses, but it, it, it never really took off. Even the Nissan Altima was popular, but it never, it never really took off. And now, now today, we're starting to see more implications of it. Now, you, this isn't stuff that you, I'll show you later on in the video, but this isn't stuff you'd never even know. So the main purpose of CVT transmissions is, much like how this bike clutch works, is you got flyweights in here. And these flyweights, when they start spinning fast enough because of the centrifugal force, that pushes those two pinions together. I'll explain this later on the video on the snowmobile and you'll be able to see it really good. So let's talk about forces. Now some of the big forces that happen, we need some friction. Here's an old drill. Friction is basically the key component here. So we have the centrifugal force of the flyweight spinning, pushing, and then the friction of pinching that belt, and then that drives it up and down. That first, that first crankshaft, it's not even attached to the belt until it starts spinning fast enough. So the force is acting on this is friction and centrifugal force. And basically it's, like I said, that centrifugal force of the flyweight's turning, squeezing it and pushing that belt and making the variable ratios between the two. Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit more about the history of CVTs, I'm using a older snowmobile here. We'll pop off the, uh, the belt guard. And this is, a, this is a 2001 Summit Axe. So, so here it is. So this is your, uh, this is your drive plug that we talked about. You can hear the compression. So that's directly from the, uh, from the engine block here. And then this is your, this is basically your crank pulley. So connected by this belt, you can see this belt, 
This belt is angled. I don't know if you can see that, but it's on an angle, so it's not it's not like this, it's like that. So like what we talked about, when when these when these weights right in here, when these start spinning fast enough for the RPM, they start going towards the center here and then that squeezes this belt and they're angled, right? So this cone is angled. So what happens is the centrifugal force of these weights gets greater and it just and it gets greater than the springs that are holding them back. And then it uh, it starts to force it this way and then the force of tension gets gets uh, immense on this belt and it uh, and it catches and then when it catches that's what cranks these and then the opposite things happening on this uh, on this crank pulley you have some typical weights um, actually right back here you can't see them and what happens is this this disc starts moving that way so basically the whole the whole justice of this uh, of why continuous variable transmission is so great is that you have basically unlimited gear ratios, one would assume, because you have your flyweights. Yeah, you can't see them, but you have your flyweights coming in, squeezing this, making this, uh, basically making this pulley from smaller to bigger, and then that uh, that causes the ratio to make this one as it goes out from bigger to smaller. So you got a big force turn a little force, and you know if you ever rode a bicycle, you know that's uh, that's where you get your highest energy output and efficiency. Um, so yeah, and the basics behind this is that yeah you have your centrifugal flyweights here, and you can tell it's not even it's not even catching on that. It's just slipping past the thing, slipping past the belt. So once you get these flyweights going, that centrifugal force it pushes this it pushes this cone forward, squeezing that. And then the more the higher you go, the more it pushes it, and the higher this belt will ride as the as the uh, ratio gets higher back here, and then. Like I said, opposite thing back here when it gets lower. I'll uh, I'll get it started up. See if I can get a video for you. Now talking about con continuous variable transmissions, we can talk about the advantages and disadvantages. You know, I really think if we just horn in on it, we can get it done quick. Now the advantages of CVT, is like I've talked about, is that it's seemingly impossible to detect the shift changes. And going back to the history, here's actually another little knowledge nugget. <laughs> the first, so CVTs, when they were, they were first kind of envisioned by Leonardo da Vinci in 1490 but then but then they were uh, they're reinvented re reincarnated in uh, in the 1890s by these people named Dalmer and Benz and now this actually branched off and then Dalmer went to his own company and then these three men joined together and the name Mercedes came and that's the name Mercedes Benz we know today and they were actually the first people to issue a patent for these CVT transmissions now although they didn't implicate it in the vehicles at the time it was the first real real Sight, a real scene of CVT transmissions in the automobile industry. <sighs> yeah. Now, if you'll bear with me for the disadvantages, the disadvantages are, you know, there's a lot of complaints, which is an odd one, but a noise. So there was a lot of complaint about noise, and that it was it was, it was loud, and there was noise pollution, and there was also the complaint that, you know, it, uh, it 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 dearly. It dearly is sad that they can't handle as much torque. This is being changed. This is being changed. Alright, we're drilling more into the problem. And when we're drilling into this problem of, of CV2 sensors, they're so efficient. And in our world today, with, with carbon taxes and we want to have a greener community, they are the future, I, I believe, of automobile industry. And, but the main problem is the torque. And that was what Nissan tried to fix, and they did, for the 3.5 liter V6 and the Nissan Altima. The issue still stands. You can't you can't put it in a truck right now. You're going to break the chain or break the belt. But these technologies, they're 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 increasing, and you know I, it's a disadvantage, but I, I don't think it'll be a disadvantage for long. And, you know, and 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 never lie. But when you talk about the, the the advantages between a CVT transmission and just a regular gearbox, 
one's not more they're really close. One's not more reliable than the other. They both require roughly the same maintenance. It's just CVTs a lot lighter and in some cases is more smoother. Well, it is more smoother, but it's more it has been proven to be more reliable. And you know, this is and this is the kind of this is the kind of thing that brings the safety aspect of semen. You know, if you're if you're shipping your son off to college. Isn't that how you want to say bye, son? <laughs> Beach floating in a mace and a little bus chase and a Friday night high got the short skirt shaking and flat bills flip back bill buckles blinking back out in the cut got four wheel drives to Cadillac tonight I yeah tonight just sipping on the good times Yeah, got nowhere to be But out here in the country in the moonlight So reach down in the cold and pull another one out of that cold ice Papa top don't stop, don't even think We got all night to do our thing We got nothing to do but drink Song bumped and the door speakers thumped and the fire popping hot got these 40 acres jumping. Ain't doing nothing wrong.